been two years or three years since I've been here, but it's great to be back myself. Uh, so I'm Bill Kelly, the CEO of the Chi Association. We're a credentialing body. And we focus really on institutional quality alts, and we did not cover things like uh, cryptocurrencies, digital assets, permission blockchains, up until maybe the last four or five years. But now more and more we're seeing it in conversations, in uh, content, in our curriculum as well. So this is a very timely discussion. I'm going to start with hoodies to suits. <laughs> so would it be fair to say the hoodie is a public blockchain and the suit is private? Oh, <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Well, to me, the hoodie is technically the technology, right? And so you had entrepreneurs and technologists that they created this $2.5 trillion industry financial system, but they did it without the help of the suits of us that have experience. I'm, I'm a former traditional finance person as well, that have the experience understanding regulation, securities, that sort of thing. Um, and I think you, everyone needs to work together. Now, on the question of public to private, which is what this is about, if we... When we speak to the banks, I think you'll find out there's a lot of regulation in this space, and the banks are the most heavily regulated, that when they're looking at actually working with this technology, most of them are working with public, sorry, private chains. Private chains, so information's not out there. They're much more protected. Um, private chains, depending on how you look at it, could be like a very large centralized database because they don't have the the decentralization that public chains do. But banks are actually looking at and asset managers. Asset managers have done public chains, but that's different. We'll get into purposes later. Um, but the banks are actually, from what I hear, uh, really looking at public chains, because the future, I believe, is public. And I believe that they're, the, like, they're similar to the intranet and the internet. So remember when companies were afraid of the internet, and we all had intranets on our computers, and that didn't really, sh it was like a bulletin board, right? Versus the internet is free access to information. So I think that this is really access to financial finances, securities, what have you. So that's how I view the two worlds. And uh, maybe uh, Anthony continues this discussion. Uh, so with the definition of blockchain, I, I'm a neophyte in this to some degree, public, private, but also I saw a hybrid and consortium. Uh, they sound like they're, they're derivatives of public and private. Is that a correct understanding? Yeah, I think you would put uh, decentralized and public on one extreme and then private and permissioned on the other. And there's iterations of each. Uh, with J.P. Morgan uh, and, and Wisdom Tree and uh, Avalanche and some others, last year we, we worked on something called Project Guardian, which was a private and permissioned instance of the public blockchain of provenance. So that was a bit of a hybrid. And the beauty of working on something like that is J.P. Morgan ran their own nodes, meaning they controlled the network. They didn't worry about a distributed network. They actually controlled their own network, which means they controlled the tokenization, which means they controlled the fees and permissioning. So it was essentially as, as locked down as a centralized database. But the beauty of building in Providence, for instance, is you can, uh, with a touch of a button, you can use something called IBC to move over to the public mainnet at a point in the future when your regulators allow it to. So it really is the best of both, and you call that a hybrid, if you will, um, offering the best of both worlds. What, what you don't want to get into is a full, very expensive build on a private blockchain that isn't interoperable with a public blockchain at some point in time, because you know, you'll have to stop what you're doing and then rebuild in the public blockchain. I think we all do agree that once the regulatory environment catches up to uh, the technology, and regulation is always behind technology, it's just, it will never catch up, it's not supposed to catch up, um, the future is certainly public blockchain. 